I was working on a project uh, with Barry Aldrich. During the conversation, he mentioned to me that he'd written a small book called My Dear Murray. And I read this book and I was fascinated by this story. I'd never heard of Admiral Sir George Murray before, but here was a Chichester man, born in Chichester, died in Chichester, was really uh, a hero. But to really tell the story about the making of the film, we need to go back to 2005. In 2005, I was mayor of Chichester. It was a wonderful year. But it was also coincided with the 200th anniversary of the Battle of Trafalgar. Well, I knew that most of the things which were going on would be in Portsmouth, but we did have in uh, the council chamber a small portrait of Nelson in bronze there, and I thought perhaps there ought to be something that we're doing here in Chichester. My interest in George Murray, Sir George Murray, began in the autumn of the year 2000, when I had to organise a reunion uh, for my RAF intake, my own band of brothers, if you like, who started off with 31, and there's a half a dozen, unfortunately, who have died. So I had to find an appropriate uh, hotel with the sort of space where, by uh, the Saturday evening, we could have our own meal, a private room, and we wanted some atmosphere and some interest. Well, the ship hotel ideally fitted the bill. And so I put a, a small advert into the local paper uh, asking if there were any um, descendants of people who were at the Battle of Trafalgar or on the victory, and would they like to come along to reception? And I was amazed. We actually had the direct descendant from the, of the purser on the victory, we had the master gunner, and we also had the uh, master carpenter. In fact, the master gunner was the man who fired the very first shot uh, at the Battle of Trafalgar. But also, bearing in mind we were our young RAF officers, all bright-eyed and bushy-tailed and just wanted a fun weekend, I found that um, in 1944, General Eisenhower met with the senior wheels of the Royal Air Force for discussions prior to uh, D-Day landings. It was hosted by the Ship Hotel on behalf of the officers' mess at Tangmere, because clearly Tangmere was a possible target and we didn't want to wipe out all the... Well, they didn't want to wipe out the top brass of the RAF in one evening, um, at least not from, um, not from a bomb. Maybe alcohol would do it. Now, about this time, um, I got to know Ian Murray, um, because another member of this intake was Dick de Vertai. And when I was telling him about the reunion and the history and the mention of Sir George Murray, he said, That's, he said, my cousin is a direct descendant of, of George Murray. So all of a sudden, I saw the way of getting a lot more information. And uh, through, through Ian and through Dick, I was able to get family trees, the service record, uh, pictures of the, of the oil paintings and so on. So I established the contact with Ian Murray way back in uh, about 2002, after, the, after the, um, uh, the reunion. Well, that sort of awakened uh, an interest, if you like, in uh, Nelson's Navy and Chichester in particular. Chichester being a very fine Georgian uh, city, a lot of the activity going on and the building of Chichester was at that particular time. And then out of nowhere came another very good source, Hugh Owen, Captain RN, Royal Navy, retired, living in Chichester, and known to the, the hotel management, and he was in the process of updating the biographies of another sort of ten or so admirals of the period for the National Dictionary of Biographies. So he was well into the history of George Murray. And he said, if you're interested in Murray, he said, you ought to read the yearbook for the year 1904 which has got about a hundred pages of letters written by Murray back to the Admiralty, to Admiral uh, Markham, describing his problems with that particular independent uh, expedition. And the management of the hotel encouraged me to publish a book to make sure it's there for posterity. So that was uh, lodged into my brain. The second thing that really happened was that I was working on a project uh, with Barry Aldrich, and this was on a neighbourhood appraisal which we were doing, and during the conversation he mentioned to me that he'd written a small book called My Dear Murray, 
which was when he had a celebration with some of his old RAF colleagues. And I read this book and I was fascinated by this story. I'd never heard of Admiral Sir George Murray before, but here was a Chichester man, born in Chichester, died in Chichester, who was really uh, a hero. I mean, in, in naval terms, he was a very important uh, part of Nelson's Navy. He was Nelson's friend. He was captain of the fleet, which is one of the highest ranks you can get in there. And also, he'd been a very important part of Chichester. Um, in fact, looking around uh, the, the boards that we have there in the council chamber, I noticed that he was mayor back in 1815. I suspect that during the conversation, he might have uh, asked if I had a spare copy of my book, my first book, but I didn't because I only produced 12 and I knew where all 12 were. If I thought I knew where they were, I knew where 11 were, but there's one missing. And I happened to spot on Amazon that it had been for sale. It was sold, but at least it had gone through their books. And they wouldn't tell me, because they weren't allowed to, who, who had bought it or even how much they'd paid for it. All points of great interest to me. So I thought, hmm, 2015 would be the 200th anniversary. And that also coincided with the 250th anniversary of the commissioning of HMS Victory, which was the ship where Murray would have been. In fact, one of the great sort of tragedies, if you like, is that the reason we don't know Murray is because at the Battle of Trafalgar, he was back in the UK. He would have been there standing next to Nelson. In July 1805, Murray's father-in-law died, leaving him executor of a complex will. Murray therefore missed the Battle of Trafalgar. Nelson would not appoint another captain of the fleet, hence the famous saying, Murray or none. And in fact, the very last letter that Nelson wrote was in fact to Murray back in here. So you could see there was a very close friendship between the two. And in fact, we always say that perhaps if uh, things and fate was different, that uh, it would have been Murray standing next to Nelson. And perhaps when Nelson died, his last words would have been, not kiss me hardy, but kiss me Murray. My wife and I went down to the Isles of Scilly because that is where the Colossus, which was Murray's ship, was shipwrecked in 1798. Lo and behold, when I went down there, and found that the local diver called Todd Stevens had written a book on Colossus. Another thing happened during that time. Um, I'd made friends with uh, Harry Page, who'd made a few films, and we'd made a few films together. And I thought perhaps a film might be a, a good way of telling the story of uh, Admiral Sir George Murray. And the first morning I was there, I found his book. Looking through the references, I see that there's about five or six references to my book and he'd published in 2007. I thought, now where on earth did he get that from? Could it be the, the, the lost book? Anyway, I arranged to see him in, in, in the Isles of St Agnes in the local pub called the Turk's Head, and I said to someone, can you point out Todd Stevens to me? Well, he was the biggest bloke around. And I said, Todd, hi, I'm Barry Aldridge. I said, I've just bought your book. He said, yeah, and he said, no, I've got yours. When Richard first approached me to make this film, I jumped at the chance. I've always had an interest in this particular period of history and to be able to combine that with my passion for documentary filmmaking and to have an actual chance to film on HMS Fitry was an opportunity not to be missed. The other thing that was working along that particular time was that um, uh, Alan Green, who was one of our also our historians, had managed to find a conveyance for the Ship Hotel, which was Admiral Sir George's house. And the Ship Hotel, um, We've actually been uh, quite an interesting place because uh, the original date uh, that was thought it was built was um, much later than uh, they thought. And the conveyance actually uh, solved a lot of the problems with that. And that gives us more information to, to put into a film. Um, I, I was born and bred in Chittister and I've lived here all my life and have a passion for its history and, and love writing about it. And I also collect anything to do with the city. Now, a good friend of mine, Terry Carlisle, is an avid eBay watcher. Uh, and if something crops up with a Chichester interest, she'll let me know. And a couple of years ago, um, a, a deed of a, of a property turned up and it was just catalogued as being um, property on the east side of North Street, Chichester, in the parish of St Peter the Less. Uh, all very vague. And this is because Georgian houses were not numbered. So it's an old element of surprise when you buy it. 
Um, but by identifying uh, from the owners, I managed to ascertain that this was in fact the building that had been on the site of the ship. Uh, shortly after that, another one appeared for 1802 for the same site. But the real breakthrough came in, in, in 2012, when another deed appeared from the same dealer, uh, this time prompting that it had the signature of Admiral Sir George Murray on it. This had to be the, the ship. So it authorised her to, to pay whatever it cost, and we secured it. And it was very exciting, because there not only was George's signature, apparently, this was definitely the site, because it included what we historians love to see, what are known as abuttles, so that it describes um, what was on either side of the property. And there it confirms that to the south it was bounded by Guildhall Street. Uh, so, uh, and not only that, but it also gave the history of what had been on the site before, tying into the two previous deeds that I got. Um, so we now had the full history of this site. So I thought that we ought to celebrate Murray and celebrate his life in 2015. The film would be actually one of the key things which would tell the story. Um, it was not going to be easy because, if you can imagine, there wasn't going to be a lot of pictures and things around at that time, so putting the story together was going to be uh, difficult. And one of the things that was great fun was going on to HMS Victory and actually going behind the scenes. And we built up a wonderful relationship with the Maritime uh, Museum in, uh, in Portsmouth, which has helped us uh, and will help us with some of the things that we're going to be doing in 2015. Richard had already produced a storyboard and when I got to see this I was absolutely fascinated by this story of George Murray who was a close friend of Nelson, played a significant role in Nelson's Navy, was Mayor of Chichester yet virtually unknown. So this is a really important part of Chichester's history that no one knows anything about so I had no hesitation whatsoever in getting involved in the project. The conveyance is a typical Georgian document um, on two vast sheets of vellum and all written in hand. Uh, one of the sheets is taken up with the terms of the trust that was set up between the uh, Cobden brother and George's brother who have administered the thing on, on their behalf. Uh, but the rest of it contains these all-important details describing the site and what had been on the site before um, including the fact that the, the Cobdens bought it and then started building a house uh, then, which wasn't complete when George Murray bought the site, so he then knocked that house down to build what is now the Ship Hotel. Uh, and of course, and all along the bottom here, you have the signatures um, of George and a lot of the Cobdens, uh, but John Murray's signature, funnily enough, is not there. A recently discovered conveyance of 1804 with George Murray's signature, although he was at sea at the time, shows that his new house, later to become the present-day ship hotel, was being built. There is, however, a conundrum about the signature. Um, it's clearly signed George Murray and sealed by him, but the muster books show that he was at sea at the time. So there are two possible solutions. One is that he, it was sent out in dispatches. He signed it and sent it back, and then the solicitor signed it um, in absentia, so he didn't actually witness the tutor at all that he's supposed to witness. Or the second, it was signed um, on his behalf by somebody else. Uh, Richard Plowman en engaged a graphologist to have a look at the signature, and her opinion was that it wasn't George's signature, uh, and it had been signed with somebody else, and possibly in a female hand. So it's possible that Mrs Murray signed this thing on his behalf uh, when he was away. But if she did, why didn't she abuse her own signature and PP it April Murray? This we shall never know. Uh, but certainly if the solicitor um, signed as having witnessed signature when he didn't, then he would have been guilty of professional misconduct. Filming on the victory was a bit of a challenge to say the least. We had to arrive by 6.30 in the morning and we had to be off the victory by 10am which is when the public are allowed on board. They were also refurbishing the victory at the time so there were sections of scaffolding around the ship uh, and areas of work on deck that were covered in sheeting. So filming had to be very tight to make sure that these structures were not in shot. Well I think we've been very lucky with the film because having Philip Robinson as the narrator, obviously a historian, um, and in fact, the way that he put it over is that usually we only ever needed to do one take, uh, which, was, which was great. So it was always known as one take Robinson. 23 one. Yep. And when you're ready, Philip. In September 1795, 
he married Anne Teasdale of Chichester. But by December 1796, he was back at sea in command of the Colossus. So he was very good, and I think he brings uh, to life, and in fact, almost looks the part. As soon as he gets into that admiral costume, you think, actually, he would have been a very good admiral. <laughs> it was a privilege to be invited to be the narrator of this film. I've had a long history uh, of interest in the British Navy, a history that goes back to my own childhood when I had aspirations of joining the Navy. The weather was also against us that day, so we did most of the external shots when we arrived, just in case it rained, which took quite some considerable time, before relocating to the great cabin. We're just about set up in the great cabin with Philip in the Admiral's uniform, sitting at Nelson's table, when Roxy, who was our chaperone from the Naval Museum, came in and announced that the workmen were going to start the corking in 20 minutes. So there was a bit of a panic because we needed to get all the shots with dialogue completed within that 20 minutes. But Philip was absolutely brilliant. I think we got most of the shots first take and we only had a problem with one shot during post-production. But in joining the Navy, I, of course, I was ambitious. I, I, I wanted to be at least a captain, a commodore, an admiral, and of course I needed to see. Uh, and one of the weaknesses that I had was poor eyesight. So the Navy was not for me, and I decided instead to become a teacher. A decision that I don't regret. I've enjoyed being a teacher, uh, found the job very satisfying, and it was indeed a great privilege in 1996 to be invited to take the leadership of what is now the University of Chichester. A great privilege because it enabled me to reconnect with my interest in naval history. A great privilege to come to Chichester, a most glorious town that I scarce knew uh, where it was. Uh, a great privilege to be able to go into the Royal Dockyards in, in Portsmouth and see those glorious uh, artefacts that represent Britain's naval history. So to uh, take part in this uh, uh, film gave me two particular uh, high spots. The first, without doubt, was to go on board HMS Victory and to be taken beyond the rope where visitors are, are normally controlled, taken beyond the rope into the main cabin where Nelson sat on the 21st of October 1805 and where he wrote the last codicil to his will, giving Emma Hamilton as a legacy to the nation. Here I am, sitting at Nelson's desk in the great cabin, surrounded by some of the letters and artefacts in possession of the Murray family that tell a wonderful story of a fascinating Chichester boy. But it was also a privilege to go to St John's Chapel in, in uh, Chichester and to stand on that three-decker pulpit and look eyeball to eyeball at the sinners that were at my level and to say to those sinners, this is the moment to repent, uh, to, to, to turn away from your evil ways that are characterising the whole of Chichester and bring them to salvation and redemption of their sins. I could feel the brimstone in my soul as I stood on, on, on that pulpit. The Murrays were known by John Marsh who mentions them in his diaries. Murray and March were involved in the establishment of St. John's Chapel, which was consecrated and opened for worship on the 24th of September, 1813. The other thing we were very lucky with was with getting the young um, uh, Sir George, if you like, Ollie Martin, who was only 12. And it must have been a daunting thing for him to come and play it, but I think if you look at the way he appears in that last scene of the film. Um, he's a very, very good actor, and I think well done to, to Ollie on that. So what was it like filming on Victory? Well, it was very like fun seeing all the Victory and getting dressed and seeing how it was preser preserved, all that like 
years, all them years ago. Mm. It was found. Yeah, and also like filming on the top top deck, looking out out to sea. Now um, you were in uh, beautiful and uh, yeah. with top hats and things. How did that feel? Yeah, like getting dressed into it, it was felt quite weird at first, but then it, like I got used to the costume and obviously the telescope, which was from the museum. I mean, you were 12, weren't you? Oh, you were 12 yeah, then well, anyway, you're 13 now, you're yeah. growing up fast. And uh, that was exactly the same age that um, uh, George Murray would have been when he was sent to sea. So he would have left his home, uh, his family. Uh, how do you think he would feel? I mean, you know, same age as you going out there, how would he feel? Obviously, like, really scared, sad, leaving all your friends and your family. And, like, obviously, like, you, you hopefully you'll meet someone on the ship, like, to make friends with. But with all, you might get, well, you'd obviously get seasick. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, it would be, like, really scary. The last scene of the film is very important in that um, it's a letter that was written when Admiral Sir George uh, died and we relive his life yeah. and you can see that sadness and maybe being a bit scared about being there in you and it's one of the best scenes in the film so well done on that. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Just try to like look as sad as possible as obviously I know how it feel leaving my family and it, all my friends so young at such a young age. Yeah. The challenge during post-production was to try and create a feel and an atmosphere that would draw the audience into the story. And the music and the special effects played a really big part in this. A fierce storm had arisen on the 10th of December. By midnight, the ship was lost, but only one crew member perished. In fact, uh, in making the film, uh, one of the areas which uh, Clive and I did discuss uh, in detail was the final sequence, uh, which was the letter uh, that was written on the death of uh, Sir George. I did have some concerns with the end sequence as Richard had a letter that he wanted to use which was from Sir Edward Pellew on the death of George Murray. Clive said to me when I gave him the storyboard, actually Richard this is a bit too long and I said well I'd really like to uh, leave it in because it actually sums up the character of Admiral Sir George Murray and the, the respect and liking of this man. And so we discussed it for a while and then uh, I suggested perhaps we could use the last letter sequence, if you had Philip Robinson reading it, that we use it as a sort of summation, a sort of summary of the life of Admiral Sir George Murray. So in effect we would have Murray's life flashing in front of the eyes of the audience. So we tried this and it worked really, really well, particularly with the music that we chose. When Clive produced it for the first time and I saw it, it brought a lump to my throat. And it's the one scene uh, throughout the whole of the making of this film we haven't changed. And when we first showed it to an audience, you could literally see and feel the emotional reaction of the audience as they watched the film and got drawn into this fascinating story. So we were really, really pleased with the end result. I will entreat you to express my deep and real regret for a man I do believe I loved as my brother. It will afford me great pleasure to show every possible respect to his memory, and should his funeral, poor dear fellow, be a public one, I shall be very glad to be found with you at his side. So I decided that uh, we'd form the Murray Club, and the Murray Club has a, 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 a motto, which is Murray or none, which in fact was the expression that's used in the Navy uh, that Nelson used about uh, he, when he went to Trafalgar, because Murray couldn't go, uh, Nelson wouldn't have another captain of the fleet, and so hence the expression Murray or none. So that's our motto of the Murray Club. And the Murray Club really consisted of uh, myself, Barry Aldridge, uh, Clive Hand as the filmmaker, um, but it also incorporated Alan Green, and uh, later on, uh, Anne Secluna, who had written a, a little book uh, on the mayor of Chichester. She'd been mayor three times herself. and. Uh, Lately, we've also obviously got Ian Murray in there, and the last person to join was Vincent Gray, who's the sculptor. So this is the Murray Club, a very select uh, number of people, and we meet and celebrate Murray. And our main objective is really to promote Murray and to make sure that he's known, if you like, to the people of Chichester. We are updating my book. 
and in fact it, it's now at a situation within a, a week or two it should be going to the printer. It relies very much on the first book but I've done some uh, additional research to fill out the various gaps. So now I think I have a book that covers just about every aspect of Sir George's naval career and also of course I, I have had access to the local city documents so I know what sort of activities he uh, indulged in during his retirement and we know where he was buried and and, um, and so as more background information we even have information on his autopsy I'm sitting here very near to the final resting place of Admiral Sir George Murray we've been raising the awareness of this man and we've already have a second edition of the book, My Dear Murray, by Barry Aldridge, and also a DVD. There's a plaque on his home, the Ship Hotel, but there's more that we can do. In 2015, it is the 200th anniversary of Admiral Sir George Murray as Mayor of Chichester. We're hoping to get the whole of the Chichester community involved with the life of this wonderful Chichester hero. We're planning a major exhibition at the Novium Museum, and we hope to get artefacts from the Portsmouth Maritime Museum, but also from the museum in the Scilly Islands, where HMS Colossus went down. There will be a walking trail going around the city, so people can see where uh, Murray lived and all the things he did within the city. We're planning uh, fun things such as a uh, Battle of Trafalgar in Mini at the Ship Canal, and we're trying to inspire many young people, such as Ollie, in the film as Sir George was a great role model. In the longer term, we hope to get a statue, the wonderful statue of uh, Admiral Sir George Murray and Nelson, which was done by um, our good friend Vincent Gray. And of course, we hope that uh, the Admiral, who for often has lived in the shadow of, of Nelson, will appreciate all that we've done to him. So, to finish, I'd just like to raise a glass to the Admiral from the Murray Club, Mario Nunn.